As with most of the history you were taught in school, the origins of Thanksgiving are not as interesting and romantic as we would like it to be. You were likely told that in the early 1600s, the pilgrims invited the Wampanoag Indians to a feast after a particularly bountiful year of harvest. The pilgrims hunted turkey and the Wampanoag brought fish, stews, and beer. They ate out in the open air, sitting on the ground. The two groups struggled to speak each other's languages as they raced, shot guns, and drank. Since then, we have celebrated thanks every year. While some of this is true, history is often simplified for the masses and the reality is often more complicated. It was believed that the pilgrims came to the new world in search of religious freedom. Well, they did leave Europe in search of that freedom and found it in the Netherlands. They left Holland to preserve their English identity and for money. They also didn't just wear black, green, and white as is often depicted, but wore a myriad of colors and there were no belt buckles on their shoes. A feast was held in 1621 between the pilgrims and the Wampanoag. They did serve venison, but at the time, venison was a meat from any animal that could be eaten. Also, the pilgrims did go fowling, but it was never specified that they caught turkey. It is more likely to have been geese or duck because turkeys were difficult to catch. There were also plenty of pumpkins at the time, and it was likely had at the feast, but the pilgrims had no way of making pie. Sweet potato was unlikely to be had as it was not grown in the area until the mid-century. And they probably had cranberries but no sauce. The tradition did not start in 1621 as a feast was not held the following year but two years later in 1623. This feast was held earlier in the year, not after harvest season. Other colonies also held their own Thanksgiving feasts at different points throughout the year. In 1789, George Washington declared Thursday, November 26th as the day of giving thanks, but only for that year. It had nothing to do with the Pilgrims and the Wampanoag feasts. It wasn't until half a century later that the lobbying for Thanksgiving to become a national holiday began. It was started by one woman, Sarah Josepha Hale. Think of her as the Oprah Winfrey of her time. Miss Hale was an author, poet, and magazine editor. Her magazine, Goudet's Ladies Book, was particularly popular as she co-wrote Mary Had a Little Lamb. Hale read the romanticized feast held in 1621 and made it her duty to turn it into a national holiday. Starting in 1846, she wrote an editorial every year to convince the masses and lobby the government to make Thanksgiving a national holiday. Finally, in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War declared it as such to be celebrated on the last Thursday of November. In 1939, President Roosevelt wanted to boost the economy, so he thought it would be a good idea to hold Thanksgiving one week early earlier. This would make the Christmas shopping season a bit longer. Not all states followed suit and he received significant backlash for this. So two years later Roosevelt changed it to the fourth Thursday of November which is not always the last Thursday as Lincoln has set. The last bit of misunderstood history has to do with the presidential pardoning of the turkey. It is believed that Lincoln pardoned the first turkey because his 10-year-old son became fond of the fowl and did not want to see it killed. This history is true, but it wasn't the Thanksgiving turkey, it was the Christmas turkey. The first presidential pardoning did not actually take place until 1989 with President George W. Bush because there were animal rights activists picketing during the turkey ceremony. Let me assure you and this fine Tom turkey that he will not end up on anyone's dinner table, not this guy. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, consider liking and subscribing. I have another special on Halloween, which you can check out here. Remember, no matter how hard, dark things may seem, the truth will always find the light. And as always, you'll hear me in the next one.